These days, it's unimaginable to travel without your cell phone. I mean, why would you? They are so handy. From maps to messages to Ubers and more, it's a downright necessity to have your phone when you travel. But if you've ever tried using your home cell phone plan while abroad and paid the price for it, literally, then you will know the importance of properly setting up your phone for international travel. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that and for way less money than you might expect. I'll share a bonus tip that could just save you hundreds of dollars at the end. So stick around and let's travel smart in style. Before we get into the best international cell phone plans and travel e-sims and all of that jazz, we need to figure out if your phone is locked or unlocked because the options you have available to you will differ depending on that crucial point. If you got your phone from your cellular provider, then it's probably locked. In most cases, you're in a contract, usually a couple of years long, and the cost of the phone is incorporated into your monthly payments. Unfortunately, this means you don't have the best phone for international travel. The good news is that once you've had a phone for a certain amount of time, your carrier is obligated to unlock the phone for you. Contact your carrier to find out the terms for your phone plan. They'll also help you unlock it, but they won't volunteer to do this and they can do it remotely. So just call them and find out. If instead you bought your phone outright, it's probably factory unlocked, which unlocks, <laughs> pun intended, a whole bunch of options for you. We'll get it to those in a bit. The best international cell phone plan for you depends first and foremost on the length of your trip. If you're taking a trip that is two weeks or less, here are your options. The easiest option for you is also the most expensive, but for short trips, it's probably worthwhile. And it works regardless of whether your phone is locked or unlocked. What is it? It's getting your carrier to give you an international roaming plan. Many cell phone companies have special temporary options or daily add-ons that make your cell phone functional while you're abroad. For an extra fee per day, usually between five and $10, depending on the company, it will allow you to make and receive calls and texts to your home cell phone number while you're abroad. And you'll also get a certain amount of international data usage per day. This makes your phone fully functional while you're traveling, so you can use it just as you would at home, including for maps, Ubers, social media, phone calls, texts, and more. It's also the most expensive option. At 10 bucks a day, in addition to your regular monthly charges, this will add up really quickly, which is why I only suggest it for shorter trips. If the international roaming add-on gives you sticker shock, the cheapest option for your locked or unlocked phone on a short trip is just to put it on airplane mode and then enable the Wi-Fi so you can connect to Wi-Fi networks as and when you find them. Putting it on airplane mode disables the cellular function, so you can't make or receive calls to your home number. Disabling the cellular function also disables data connections, so you won't be able to use any apps that require internet unless you're on a Wi-Fi network. And if you're on a public Wi-Fi network, make sure you're also using a VPN. More on that in the description. This also means you won't be able to use apps like Uber while you're out and about. So think about whether that kind of functionality is important to you. You can, however, use certain apps offline like Google Translate and Maps, as long as you download the relevant maps or dictionaries before you go or while you have a Wi-Fi connection. If you're going away for more than two weeks, but less than, well, forever, you'll probably want to still keep your home phone plan intact, but it won't make sense to pay the daily roaming fee to use it abroad. Here are your options. One, get an international phone plan. This works if your phone is locked or unlocked. Depending on where you're from, you might have the ability to get an international cell phone plan. This is a regular monthly cell phone plan that will work seamlessly no matter where in the world you are. As soon as you land in a new place, your phone will connect to the local network and you can use your phone as normal. Easy peasy. Examples of these kinds of phone plans for US residents include T-Mobile's Magenta Plan and Verizon's International Plan. Now, there's a cost for all this convenience. These kinds of phone plans aren't cheap, but past a certain point, it'll be cheaper than the daily roaming add-ons. If you're traveling for more than a couple of weeks or if you travel frequently and you need your home phone number to work wherever you are, it may be worth it to have one of these monthly international plans. I'll also note that Google Fi is another international phone plan option, but if you are traveling long-term or if you travel internationally frequently, beware. Their plans are designed to be used nationally and internationally on occasion. 
and they have been unceremoniously cutting off plans for people who have been abroad too long, whatever that means. Two, if you can't unlock your phone and you don't want to pay for an international plan, here's your other choice, a mobile Wi-Fi hotspot. With this option, you'll put your phone on airplane mode while you're out of the country so you don't get dinged for roaming. Then you can connect to your mobile Wi-Fi hotspot. A mobile Wi-Fi hotspot is a small device that gives you a Wi-Fi connection for your phone, laptop, and other devices. Because you can connect multiple devices to one hotspot, it's ideal for couples or families traveling together. Two of the main providers of mobile Wi-Fi hotspots are KeepGo and Travel Wi-Fi. With KeepGo, you buy your mobile hotspot for about 100 bucks, and then you pay for data on a pay-as-you-go basis. The more data you buy in one go, the less it costs. And if you top up before the data expires, any unused data carries over. Or you can sign up for a prepaid monthly plan that costs less on a per gig basis, but it's only good in the USA and Europe. You can also switch between plans whenever you like. With Travel Wi-Fi, you can rent the hotspot starting at about $8 a day, including data, or you can buy the hotspot outright for $149 and get various data packages depending on where you're going and for how long. The best international Wi-Fi hotspot depends on your needs. To me, the KeepGo website is a bit easier to understand with global data, but if you're only going on a short trip, renting a hotspot with travel Wi-Fi might make more sense. In the description, you will find more information about mobile Wi-Fi hotspots and even a discount just for you. Now, if your phone is unlocked, you automatically have the best cell phone for international travel with the most options available to you. Let's get into it. First of all, it's important to decide what to do with your home cell phone plan. You aren't beholden to your carrier anymore in the same way since your phone is paid off and unlocked. This gives you the ability to switch carriers if you like, or even to cancel your plan entirely. Now, before you go out all like, Nora, I can't let go of my cell phone number. Don't worry, I know, these days you need a cell phone number in your country of residence, if for nothing else than to get text messages for two-factor authentication when logging into bank accounts and such. But this doesn't mean that you need to be tied to an expensive full-service phone plan that you're not gonna use. Because if you travel long-term or even full-time as a digital nomad, a regular phone plan might be a waste of money. Here are your options. One, downgrade to a basic no frills phone plan. The more basic, the better. Just a phone number with the ability to receive texts internationally or over Wi-Fi will do. Don't even worry about international data. We will go other, over other ways to get that. Two, you could move your phone number to an app or online service. For a one-time fee, you can port your existing number to an online service like Skype or an app like Hushed or Tossable Digits. And then you'll pay a very low monthly fee and in some cases, no fee at all that allows you to make and receive calls to and from this number over Wi-Fi or data, regardless of where you are in the world. And if you're Canadian, check out Fongo. It's a free app that allows you to make and receive calls to and from Canada from anywhere in the world over Wi-Fi or data for free. I've been using it as my sole Canadian number since 2017. It's the best. I can be in Timbuktu and my dad can call me on my Canadian number. It's a local call for him in Canada and it's 100% free for me to take that call. In the case of online phone numbers, a common objection that I get is about short code authentication texts. Many online phone numbers don't accept them. Although this seems to be changing pretty quickly. Like I said, I have been using an online phone number as my primary Canadian number since 2017. And yes, in some cases, I don't always get verification texts, but in every single case, there's always a workaround. For example, I can receive a phone call with the verification code or an email. For the cost of free, it's an incredibly minor inconvenience that I've always found a workaround for. With the No Frills phone plan or the online app, you are now sorted in terms of a phone number in your home country, which really is just for posterity and authentication texts and maybe for your grandma to call you if she doesn't know how to use WhatsApp or Messenger or Skype or any of the free online messaging and calling services. So now there are two things you need, data and maybe a local phone number at your destination. Here's how to do both. Because your phone is unlocked, you can insert any SIM card from anywhere. This means when you arrive in a new place, you can get a SIM card that will give you a local phone number which makes it easy to stay in touch with people at your destination. And often you'll get inexpensive local data as well. I always suggest getting a local SIM card at the airport 
You'll find kiosks in the arrivals hall and the people there will get you set up in minutes. No plans, no contracts, no hassle. These SIM cards are generally cheap and in some cases they're effectively free with an equivalent amount of fund credit that comes with the card. And airport kiosks offer special plans specific to travelers who are staying for shorter periods of time. While I originally thought that they would cost more at the airport because of the convenience, I found they're usually pretty competitively priced. Also, once you leave the airport, buying a SIM card can be considerably more complicated and in some cases downright impossible since local shops aren't always equipped to set up new plans for non-residents. The other advantage to getting a local SIM card at the airport is that you can immediately start using it, which you may need to do if you want to catch an Uber to your accommodation, for example. It's just so much easier. While a local SIM card gives you a local phone number and sometimes great rates for local data, if you're just passing through, it might not be worth it to get one. And you may not need the phone number anyway, especially with apps like WhatsApp, which in some parts of the world is actually what even local residents exclusively use. So if you're on a trip where you're changing destinations a lot or you just don't need a local phone number, then an international data SIM card or international data eSIM is for you. This is actually what I use 100% of the time at home in Canada and while traveling. It's amazing. As soon as I arrive at a destination, I have a connection. I don't have to do anything. Data SIM cards can be offered in a few different formats, including regular SIMs and eSIMs. A data SIM card offers you, you got it, data. There's no phone number associated with the SIM card. And in most cases, you purchase data as you go through an app on your phone. Data packages vary depending on the provider. Many offer packages based on geography, so you can buy data for a specific country or a region, for example, like Europe. Or you can purchase global data plans that tend to be more expensive, but they cover you anywhere and everywhere. Prices for data also vary depending on the amount of data you buy and the expiry date. The longer it is to the expiry date, the more the data will cost, but the longer you can amortize that expense. My advice, look for deals. My global data SIM card provider of choice is Flexaroam, and they regularly offer up to 80% off global data. Like, they do this every month. I wait until they're featuring one of these deals, and then I purchase five gigs of data with a 180 day expiry date for about five bucks a gig. Okay, this video is already way longer than I wanted it to be, and believe it or not, I have just barely skimmed over the top options for you to stay connected while you travel. I wrote an article on my website that goes into even more depth on various cell phone strategies and it even covers some additional options I didn't mention in this video like international phone SIM cards, which by the way, don't, just, just don't. But before I wrap up this video, I promised you a bonus tip that will save you from getting nailed by roaming charges. Beware of borders. If you are anywhere near a land border, turn your phone off and don't turn it back on until you were well clear of the border. Let me explain. An American friend of mine was driving across the Canada-US border. While he was still on the US side, he sent a few messages using his US phone number before crossing over. Unfortunately, he was close enough to the border that unbeknownst to him, he was picking up Canadian cell signals, which meant he was roaming and his messages resulted in an extra $40 charged to his monthly bill. Now, he got off lucky. If he had made a phone call, it could have been hundreds of dollars. You can avoid this challenge by putting your phone into airplane mode or turning off international roaming in your phone settings while you are close to a border. Do you have any hot international cell phone tips? Do you use an app or service that I didn't mention? Do you still have unanswered questions? Drop a comment and let me know. I'm all ears, or eyes. I'm Nora Dunn, AKA The Professional Hobo, and I will catch you next time. With